So what is it that basically determines the, the climate of a planet? Okay, so, so if we want to understand the climate, or in particular the temperature, the surface temperature of, of a planet, you first have to understand something about the connection between temperature and energy. Uh, temperature is, loosely speaking, uh, a measure of the energy content of something. Something that is hotter actually has more energy inside it. And uh, so, uh, in order to determine the temperature, you need to know something about the rate at which energy goes in and the rate at which energy goes out. And so, going back to Fourier in 1827, it was recognized that the energy source that maintains the Earth's temperature is the sunlight, the sunlight that's absorbed, not energy coming up from the interior of the planet, but the sunlight that's absorbed. And so, if you kept absorbing all this sunlight and you kept accumulating energy, then the planet would just heat up and heat up and heat up. The temperature would grow without bound until we melted. And so, uh, so the energy source is only half of the picture. Uh, the second piece of the story is the energy loss mechanism. And this was another great insight by Fourier that there is only one way that a planet can lose energy, given that outer space is essentially a vacuum. The only way that a planet can lose energy, the only thing that exits from a planet is light radiation, electromagnetic radiation, and light I mean broadly construed. So there is light that we can't see, infrared, which uh, Fourier calls chaleur obscure, dark, dark heat, uh, or dark rays, they called it at the time. But it's what we now call infrared, it's too red to see. Uh, and every body with a temperature emits infrared radiation, emits electromagnetic radiation. If it's at a round room temperature, it emits radiation in the infrared. Uh, if it's very hot, it emits radiation in the visible, like the sun does. Uh, but so the other part of the equation that determines the temperature of a planet is the rate at which you lose energy. And here the key insight, which was already known to Fourier, but not quantified yet, was that the hotter a body gets, the more rapidly it loses energy. And so you're receiving energy at more or less a fixed rate from the sun, and then the temperature builds up and builds up and builds up. The hotter it gets, the more rapidly you lose energy to space by infrared radiation, and then bang, when, you, when what goes out equals what comes in, that's your equilibrium temperature. And that is called the radiating temperature of the planet. And so the radiating temperature of the Earth might be something like minus 20 Celsius, even though the surface temperature uh, is, is a lot higher than that. Uh, and that difference between the radiating temperature, which is something you measure from satellites and can confirm, that difference between the radiating temperature and the surface temperature is accounted for by greenhouse gases. When we add carbon dioxide to the atmosphere, we are not primarily changing the radiating temperature. What we're changing is the radiating altitude, the radiating level, so that the atmosphere is radiating to space from a higher altitude than it used to be. So that the temperature at the radiating level, which is still, let's say, minus 20, remains at minus 20, but, it's, but that temperature is occurring higher up. And since the, the temperature or the rate of temperature increase as you go deeper in the atmosphere is approximately fixed. But you're starting at that minus 20 from higher up. By the time you extrapolate to the ground, you wind up with a higher temperature. And that's a slight oversimplification because that temperature rate of increase is not precisely fixed, but it's close enough to, to the way the situation actually works. But it is essential to recognize that the greenhouse effect can only work if there is cold air up there. Uh, in order for the greenhouse gas increase. In order for increase of carbon dioxide to, uh, to retard the rate of energy loss from a planet, uh, there has to be some place colder than the surface for the planet to radiate. And that, and that relies on the temperature decrease with altitude. Uh, in the Earth regime, that temperature decrease with altitude is primarily caused by convection, by this continual buoyancy-driven stirring from the fact that the ground is hot and then it has to communicate its heat upward by, by warm air rising. It's that convection, stirring things, that primarily determines how cold it is higher up. On the average, temperature goes down about six degrees with each kilometer that you go up. In some places, it's a little bit different. Some places, a little bit more, a little bit less. But, about, uh, but a good round number is about six degrees for each kilometer you go up. And so remembering that the radiating temperature stays the same and that, and that adding a greenhouse gas warms the surface by uh, pushing that radiating 
level higher up in the atmosphere, we can ask the question, how much, how high do we have to push it? How much higher do we have to push that level in order to get, say, a two degree warming at the surface? Well, to get a six degree warming, we, given that the temperature gradient is six degrees per kilometer, you would push that radiating level up by one kilometer. Uh, to get a six degree warming at the surface. To get a two degree warming at the surface, you only need to push it up about a third that much, which is in round numbers, 300 meters. And so it takes relatively little increase in the infrared murkiness of the atmosphere to uh, change the uh, altitude uh, at which infrared escapes to space by a mere 300 meters. And that's, that's part of why the climate is so sensitive to greenhouse gas concentrations.